What's up guys, I'm Lee Williamson and today we're going to model a salt holder inside of Cinema 4D. Now there are always a couple of gotchas when it comes to cutting holes inside of models, especially if they're not just straight squares and they're more um, spherical. So I'm going to show you how to get past those and these tips will be useful enough in modeling other assets too. So without further ado, let's dig in. Right, so I'm going to start off with a sphere. Press NB on my keyboard so I can see my segments. And I'm going to dial these segments back to eight. So like that. And then I press E on my keyboard and I'll break it apart. And then what I can do is come in here. And what can we do with this? Get rid of that. Press E on my keyboard to get a, a ring selection. Hold down Control and drag down to extrude. And then just press E on my keyboard and scale in. What I can do is I could fill that in using a close, hole, uh, close polygon hole. And uh, what I'd like to do is blue is my Z axis. I always like to cut my lines in the same direction as the Z axis. So what I'm doing here is just cutting two lines in here to make sure that we've got um, a four sided polygon. And then what I can do at the top here is have another loop cut over here say about there and this is going to be the top lid of the salt holder so we can delete that bit out yeah, let's just put this inside a subdivision server so i'm going to click on my let's call it salt holder that actually is called a holder uh, press alt and hold down alt and press subdivision surface just so we can see what it looks like And here on my keyboard again, double click on it and extrude with holding down control like that. And T on my keyboard, extrude out. And then control again, extrude up. So this is essentially just the, the, the handle holder. And then I can extrude inwards. And once again, flop that hole. And I'm going to make sure that once again, this lines in the same direction as the Z axis. Just needed to have that cross there and that cross there in exactly the same places. So what do we have that looking like now? Okay, well that's, that's pretty decent. So the next thing to do is we want to cut a hole inside here. So, you know, you stick your hand into the salt holder to pick up some salt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate a copy of that holder. Um, just call it backup. And I'm going to put that on, uh, hide it or hide it out, chide it away. And what I want to do now it's always good to actually keep copies of your work, by the way. You'd be surprised where you may need it. So now I'm going to click on this point here and I want to bevel out. Okay, so as you see, I need to bevel a circle which needs to have eight sides. So currently if I add in one extra subdivision under the bevels here, um, We've got more of a star so if we go to our depth and we pull it backwards to minus um, 100 we should get that circle in there now and then if i just apple z that try that again now that i've already got the settings in there and just keep going until it snaps to just eight sides now do you see these 
blue lines, yeah, that's basically uh, end gardens um, because there's more than four sides of here. So I need to fill in these lines. So I can go to uh, end gardens here and say remove end gardens, and that should remove all the end gardens there. And then I can punch a nice hole by just pressing that middle point and deleting it. Now we should have a nice hole in there. Cool. And if we press E on our keyboard, let's see if this will do a ring selection. Perfect. I'm going to go to a side view of this. Press T on my keyboard and just scale that out as wide as possible. Okay. And just see what that looks like. Cool. Now, first of all, I'm going to try and see if I can break this as much as possible. Uh, usually when you have a salt hold of this, there's, I'm trying to remember how it is. I think this, the, the hole may be a lot higher up, which is kind of hard because you've got the perfect eight circles, uh, eight sides over here. And what if you wanted it further up, but you don't want to mess with that shape. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to try and mess with the shape and see what happens. So I'm going to use my slider on point mode and slide up like that. And then I'm going to double click on that selection, go to my modeling axis, go to normal modes. I think that may be right. And I'm just going to move it up as high as possible. And that'll be the right way to do it. But what you're already noticing is it's starting to totally muck with the shape of my um, circle. So I can press T on my keyboard. It's in normal mode and scale it, out, scale it to zero. And that should retain a nice circular shape there. And let's just see how that looks. Okay, so that's already looking a lot better. Now, this shape may still be further affected. Uh, so what we could do is we can go into our shrink wrap and we can drag a shrink wrap underneath here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the old backup I had uh, before the circle was cut into it. And what it does is shrink wrap shapes it to the shape of the original salt holder that didn't have the hole in it. So when I snap it in, you're going to notice that it's forced that circular shape now to go around. If I had to turn on the backup on, it's forced it to go around that shape. So now we've retained a more circular shape that we wanted from before, which is awesome. And then I'm just gonna click these both, select them both and connect objects and delete. Cool. So what would be the next thing to do? The next thing would be to cut some extra shapes inside here. So we can press T on a keyboard and scale in. You turn the subdivision surface off so I can really see that. UL to do a ring selection. You know what, we could probably scale it once again, even bigger, nice and big like that. And we might need to do that uh, shrink wrap again on here. Actually, you know what, it probably isn't gonna be that big. And there, maybe. Okay, I think that seems about the right amount. So, once again, I'm just going to go into that shrink wrap. I probably should have done it after this, but let's whack it inside there again. And drag that shrink wrap in there. Boom. Yeah. Cool.
Okay. Now, first things first, it's more than likely this. We, we want that to follow the contours of the circle, but we don't want that to follow the contours of the circle. So I'm once again going to go to here, my keyboard on normals mode and scale that to zero. Have I done that right? Maybe go on the side view. It'd be a lot easier to do that way around. Hold down shift and bring that to zero. Cool. And then hold down control and scale out just to create that lip. See how that looks. Already that's looking a lot better. No, something seems a bit weird. Um, what we could do is that doesn't quite feel circular anymore. So if I had to drag in an inside of here, and change it inside to eight sides, and just so we can compare that hole. And just what I suspected. doesn't quite seem All right so what if we scaled I'm gonna press UY on the keyboard to select the whole selection Press T on my keyboard and try and scale best as I can. It would probably be better if I just actually UI, let's see, um, UL. And deleted. The whole bit again. And we lined that up. We change it normal mode to axis. And we can line that up to match the circle. Now that could have happened when I was shaping it via its normals. But just good to know for good practice if you ever come to this kind of a, a um, problem. Cool. Now that should be a perfect circle. And now we can double click UL. Put on normal mode and extrude out. It should be correct this time and then press T scale in. Actually, you know what? Just the scale in. And then you will. Scale out like that. Cool. And see what that looks like. See, now that's already loads better. And what we could then do is we could just go to the holder and put a couple of extra control cuts in there. Maybe one over here. Let's press NA just so I can see how it's pinching on the end. In B to turn the lines back on again. And perhaps if I put a control cut there, that should sharpen up that in quite nicely. 
And once again, the same thing we can do here and here. And just see how that sharpens up. Cool. So really that's looking a lot better. We could also do the same thing to the hold over here. Perhaps we wanted to press Q on the keyboard, by the way, to turn your subdivision surface off. And you could probably put a control cut here and a control cut there, just to give it a little bit more of a sharper feeling over there. Now, I'm kind of wondering whether that should be uh, rounder here. So if I hold down shift, so it snaps it to the middle and then press T on my keyboard. Wait, let's try E. Double click on that, press T. And scale that out. We might just get a much nicer rounder feeling over there. Okay, that's cool. And then what we want to also do is we don't want this inside just to kind of end off right here. We kind of want it to bend around the corner so that it feels like I've actually modeled the inside too. I mean, I'm just going to cheat by drawing a few extra loops inside there. So NB to turn my lines on again. I'm going to go into display mode and choose isotopes so I don't see the extra line cuts added by uh, segments added by subdivision surfaces. I'm going to take that inner selection. I'm going to scale in and then press T and scale out. Just make sure that it hasn't touched any other surfaces. Let's try that again. Scale in, scale up, scale in and scale even further out just so it's got a nice little bend around the edges there that should probably work nicely okay so now we have our shape um perhaps we could play around with uh, the shape a little bit more and by doing this we can use a uh, some deformers so we could use a taper or bulge uh, say for example i wanted to put a bulge inside here and i put it underneath the holder and i say fit to parent and i scale it out so let's just say we want a salt holder to be dumpier see let's just go really really tapered but the problem is now it's affected the hole on the shape so for this case is i'd like to show you how you can resolve that so we turn our bowls to form off and what we can do is we can make a selection of the holder itself so what i could do Let me see what's the best way to do it. We could do a loop selection of the holder and the very end piece that I created over there. And then what I can do is press U, F, and hold down shift and fill the whole holder. And then I can press invert. So invert is UI. 
mm. if you put it uh, the icon in your um, in your workspace. So now I have the container selected. I can go into select and um, set selection, and we call this uh, holder. And then we can go into our bulge and we select a tag called restriction tag. And now we want to restrict this, uh, restrict this so that only that is unaffected. So essentially you're dragging that restriction tag into there and look what happens. This restriction tag allows only the holder to be deformed, but not the circle that we had not selected, which is incredibly useful. Now, if that is the shape you want to go for, uh, I, I might not. So I'm to be honest, I'm just going to keep that off for now, but just, just have it out there. Now, the next step I'd like to show you is I'm going to duplicate the solder. So let's just press control C on the keyboard, control N, create a new document and press Control V and paste this in here. I'm going to delete that holder and be on my keyboard to turn my segments back on. And all I'm going to do is actually, you know what? I might not want to just take this whole entire thing because what I'm going to do is going to require my selection tag. So double click that selection. Uh, invert the selection and I'm going to delete that part. I'm going to delete the bulge. I'm going to take it out the subdivision surface and I'm just going to be left with a holder. And I'm going to call this salt. So what I want to do is I want to create the shape for the salt itself. So I am going to go into my side viewport into uh, front view, probably what go right. Press nine, no, it's zero for a rectangle selection. You can also see rectangle selection up here. And I'm gonna select that and delete it. And then what I'll do, so essentially I'm trying to reclaim what I had here, is I'm gonna scale this back down. I'm not quite getting it right, so I could just select all the points on that same horizon point press T on my keyboard and bring my Y down uh, and then scale down. So all these points are now straight. And then I could do the same thing again with these points here. You could probably select a whole lot actually. Pull Y back to 100 press T on my keyboard and scale the whole lot up there and then try and fudge this and you know what I could just delete this whole lot boom just like that we could select this whole selection and we can find mirror selection so I select all of it and I have a mirror tool. Mirror tool is MH. Let's you dock the icon, which is a lot more useful for me since I can't always remember it. Now, currently, as you notice, it's not working. So this screen mode must be changed to world. Now try clicking on it and it's still not working. So you've got to just, I never quite know which one it is. So I kind of just keep going between X, Y and X and Z until I find the one that works. It's not that one, so it's definitely X and Z. Wow, you'd think that one would be working. Z and Y. Okay, so let me think on this. 
Ah, uh, it might be my orientation. So if I center axis two, will be my orientation. Yeah, so I'm going to center that to the middle and then just see if that does any different. What if I rotated it this way and then try to mirror? Ah, oh, there we go. Now I've married it on there. Oh, sorry for that long, laborious process. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to fill up that hole. And take my knife tool again. Across, one across there. One across there. Let's just cut that hole out. Right, cool. So now I've got quads inside here. That's cool. Now I want to stick this inside the subdivision surface just to give it some extra segments. And then I want to press Alt on my keyboard on, uh, on the subdivision surface. And I want to stick this inside of a null. Because when you put a deform on this, I want to deform with the extra segments made from the subdivision surface. So I want to stick my sub, uh, deform over here and not underneath the salt, because then it will only use the amount of segments I have inside here. So let's explain how this works. So I'm going to be using a displacer deformer and this displacer I'm going to add some noise to. And that's what I'm going to get the shape to the salt that's going to be sitting inside of my salt holder. If I go inside this noise, I can bring up its global scale just to smooth out that noise. Okay, so we've got a nice bit of waviness. And then I can go and bring up the height. We bring up the height bit higher something like that okay that's cool now the problem we have here is the salt is gonna peek out on the sides of the salt holder and that's a problem so let's show you how we're going to resolve this so i'm going to type in salt press um, control c on my keyboard and go back to my salt holder let's just call this group Holder, and then paste this out, and this will be group. Let's call that salt. And I'm just going to go and turn that deform off. Let me that bulge deform at the moment. And that's why it's still there. There we go. Cool. So we've got our salt. We've got our salt holder. Oh, that's strange. Okay, let's try that again. Pull C. Seem to have remembered my previous project in there. Okay, cool. So now we have our salt sitting inside here. And as you see, the salt is going all the way through the geometry. 
and we only really want it on the top. So what we're going to do is we are going to click on our salt. We're going to select all of the salt. Control all, Control A. And we're going to go into set vertex map and say OK. And it's going to make everything red. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on this use fields. And we're going to delete this freeze and we're going to choose something called where are you? A sphere field. And what it does is it makes everything yellow at the top and red at the bottom. So everything that's yellow will be the, the warpy waviness I've created and everything that's red will be the, it'll be telling it not to warp basically. So if I click off that now, hopefully that's, that's, that's done it. Let's see. Yeah, that's done amazing. Not okay. Tell you what, I'm going to go back into this version so I can see it more clearly. Let's try that again. Set vertex map. Okay. Use fields. Delete freeze. Use a sphere. And we're getting nothing. Okay, I think I realized what the problem was. If I go in my display set and I choose linear, and I'm gonna scale it in and rotate it this way and scale it down. Ah, ah, <laughs> okay, so here is the problem. Well, this is like I did before. We're gonna click on our displacer and we're gonna use a tag. And we're gonna go into our restriction tag and we are gonna restrict this vertex map. So this vertex map has a name. And we drag it in there and we've got the vertex map. And now we've got that lovely wobbliness on the one side. So we don't want a linear field. We would like to have a spheric, spherical field. I can't even pronounce that. And then just, you can take that uh, field and scale it up as much as you like. I'm gonna perhaps put it over there. That's great. Okay, so now let's control C that salt, delete it all from here and paste it back inside here. And there we go, it's, it's better, but it's not 100%. So we could just use a little bit of fudgery in there too. We can go inside here and uh, what can we do that we could improve that? We could go to our salt itself. We could go into our core, not coordinates, our, to our attributes. And we could scale it down slightly. So let's see what's scaling here. Okay, see these are coming in. So that could be like 97. And then on this side where it's still coming through, we can pull that in a little bit more. No, not that one. Ninety three, even maybe. Okay, perhaps ninety three, and then bring it in over there at ninety three. So ninety three, a point nine three on the Z, and point nine three on the X. Cool. 
And then if you don't want to see that um, display so there, you can just pretty much turn it off by just clicking the red eye on the top. And then press NA to turn it off, to have a proper look at it. Now, first of all, my salt holder, my subdivision surfaces could probably be higher. So I'm going to turn subdivision editor to three. And that should already smoothen this out. And I'm sure I could do the exact thing to the salt and also turn that to three. And that should give me a much more smoother effect over there. The other thing is when you're looking at the salt holder, it, salt is probably going to be cascading from top to bottom. So how could we resolve that? Uh, perhaps we could um, take the salt itself and we could just maybe take some of these points, these three points perhaps, and just bring them down. So the original shape is there and just scoot them down a little bit. So it feels like it's high at the front and lower, lower at the back. Cool. Is there anything else we could do to this to improve it any further in B? Uh, perhaps we could do, you know, uh, I, you know, we could even use more deformers if we'd like. Uh, what would be a nice way to to show you further nice things that we could do with this? Have you ever used a multi-former? This might work, might not, but let's give it a try anyway. Um, I'm going to stick it underneath the, the bulge over here. I'm going to click on melt. And I'm going to pull its strength really low. And then I'm going to bring it just to the bottom and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck in the, the shape of the holder. Now you could just do this by moving around points and I could just take that melt again and duplicate it onto the salt so that it flattens both bottoms at the same time and that would be a really cool way just to fudge that bottom bit so that it's now on a flat has a flatter bottom unless of course you want to just move the geometry around and make that better uh maybe even the the top could be a little bit too thick you know so we could resolve that too uh if i clicked on the holder itself i could click on the top and then i can press ul over there holding down shift and then you F for fill and fill the whole selection like I did before and then press T on the keyboard and we could just scale that whole entire holder in. So maybe we scale to like 70, you know, and it, let's see it from the side view. And then maybe move it down a bit so that we're retaining that shape. So the nice thing is you really can go back into your models and edit them. And A, cool. I think I'm quite happy with that. Right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial as much as I did making it. If you did enjoy it, please like, share, and subscribe as I'd very much appreciate it. And I will continue to create content for you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.